Meeting for the village of Shipman regular scheduled board meeting for August 12, 2024, at 7 o'clock. All right, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, roll call, please. Donahue. Yes. Marina. Absent. Eichen. Yes. Uh, Cottingham. Yes. Mills. Yes. All right, approval of the minutes. Everybody should have a copy of the minutes from July the 8th in front of them. Somebody wants to make a motion? Got a motion by Donahue to accept the approval of the minutes. Do we have a second? second? Got a second by Cottingham. All those in favor, aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Correspondence, anybody got anything for correspondence? We got the tax bill again for this section. Um, I sent an email to the assessor's office. They will be doing the um, review in this fall and they have to get approval from the Internal Revenue Service before those uh, bills can be marked as exempt. So I need to get back in touch with them and find out if maybe the email kind of sounded like maybe we have to pay it and then they would reimburse us to keep it from going from tax sale, but I want to confirm that before I get anybody writing out checks. Anybody else have anything under correspondence? Um, under the correspondence, the last time did you make contact with Jersey County Rural Water and get the the uh, sheets and stuff that she was talking about? Or um, I know, and I called. I called okay. two other additional times. I have to talk to Greg. Um, they have to get the past rate sheet or rate information from the accountant because they don't it doesn't retain it in their system for okay. whatever reason so i told her i'd like to come and speak with them tomorrow she's supposed to give me a call back and let me know when they have that stuff ready okay she said oh, she also said she didn't understand that it was a timely <coughs> thing that we needed but I, I clearly told her what we were using it for okay all right anybody else got anything for correspondence Old business. Everybody have their economic interest statements done and turned into the county. I will have to get you one, Warren, and have you just submit it. And it can be done online. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll, I'll have it done as well. You you need one printed out. Yes. Okay. Uh, signage for the front window of town hall. I have not talked to. I did. Oh, did you, Kyle? I said he was out of town for I, I a couple over of there weeks. I told okay. them that um, we got to go ahead to have it done. She said that they would, she would let them know when they got back in town that it's we're, we're good to go, and they'll have it cut and, and installed, and then send us a bill. Okay. Uh, discussion and possible action regarding the cemetery mowing bids. Uh, I just have one bid, unless anyone else has a bid for mowing. <coughs> okay. Okay. So Uh, Foyles Farms bid 750 per cut based off what had heard was already approved for the 2024 season called John Gonzalez. John, do you know, are those guys insured and everything? Yeah. 
got a certificate of insurance and all that stuff? You can have, yeah. Because that would be one of the uh, the requirements. That, <clears throat> excuse me, of mowing is that they have to have the insurance. Yeah, it's still a million dollars, or I know, years yep. years past. Yeah. Okay, uh, parish lawn care. Parish Lawn Care, bid of contract, offers an overall bid of $795 in total per mow of the entirety of the Shippen Cemetery grounds, including banks, ditches, raised grave plots, and remaining cemetery grounds, but exempting any state-maintained cemetery ground. And I have a copy of the insurance with the limits and everything on that. Also have a letter of recommendation from the cemetery board chairman, John Quant. Uh, Abby and Quinn have been mowing the Carrollton City Cemetery for three years, doing an outstanding job on all the 16 acres of Carrollton Cemetery. So they have cemetery experience. You want to, uh, you guys want to look at these? Yeah, that's Apologies on the handwritten, it was going to be more formal. I thought the meeting was tomorrow, so mm -hmm. I wanted to rush in here and fill it out in the lobby and hand it to you. It's 750, what's over 790? 750 for one and 795. Okay. You guys have an obligation to take the lowest responsible bidder. But he's got to provide us with insurance first. Any bidder would have to any bidder would have to prove, prove of insurance. Making us in the uh, actually a certificate of insurance is, is the easiest way for them to give us just to make us a, a, give us a certificate, and then that way we get notice later on if they happen to get if they don't pay a premium or something. That's pretty simple, that. pretty mm -hmm. simple for those guys. Well, we make a motion now. <clears throat> make a motion get foils. Yeah. So I have a motion by Mills to take uh, Foyles Farms bid for seven fifty per cut, providing providing they provide us with the necessary insurance papers. I'll second it. Got a second by Iken. Let's roll call that. Donnie. Yes. Iken. Yes. Todd. Yes. And, sorry. Okay. Who did I call Mills? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, sorry. And Trevina's absent. So if you'll get that certificate of insurance and get that to Dawn. Yeah, I can get it tomorrow. Okay. Well, you drive that, you can start. All right. Reports. Finance. Approval of the bills. Everybody's got a bill sheet in front of you. Has our overtime improved any? It has somewhat, yes. I hope it's cut in half. This is before we had extra help. Right? 
Yeah, this is before we had the extra help. Yeah. Yeah. What What's he doing out there tonight? May I ask. Doing out where? On uh, Prairie Street. I made him on Prairie Street come off the blacktop and headed north. When I got he had his light. Wheels. He had his light going on. And on he went down and stopped somewhere. I look back in the mirror and I see the lights flashing. Uh, is he? He might out be out doing some of them uh, checking them he meter might be readings. Doing and yeah. Oh, no, he did. I don't know. I'm just saying that that's maybe what he's doing. I don't know for sure what he is doing, but I did give him one that needed to be reconnected because they paid. White, are you still here? Yeah. What? <laughs> you still here? Okay. <laughs> sort of. Was <laughs> mayor or attorney? Remember what he said last month? They're a prime candidate for bankruptcy. <laughs> So what do we want to do with the bills? I don't need that pain. Yeah. Got a motion by Donahue to pay the bills. We have a second. Uh, second. Second by Mills. Let's roll call that, please. <coughs> Donahue. Yeah. Trudy knows absent. Eichen? Yes. Cottingham? Yes. Mills? Yeah. All right, you also have a financial report in front of you. By Donahue to accept the financial report. We have a second. I'll second it. All those in favor, aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed, the ayes have it. All right. Dwight, do you want to speak or would you like to wait for Jacob, sir? I'll wait for Jacob. I don't okay. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know if you had anything besides what. No. Okay. All right, cemetery. Anybody got anything for the cemetery? I think we just covered it. Yeah. Carmen, good morning, man. All right. Mr. Cox told me that he had an 80 hour to 40 hour week job in Bowdoin Catholic Cemetery. There were just too many hours. The reason he had to quit, he'd done a heck of a job, I thought. I hate to see him go. We got a new man. I wish him luck. Uh, anybody else got anything? Uh, anybody got anything for health and safety? All right. For the Park Association, Steve, is that you that is going to speak? Uh, well, yeah, just, uh, just again, that we're interested in taking over the library. Whatever, whatever the. 
the little red schoolhouse, whatever that takes, or you know, the management of it or something. It's going to need a lot of work done on it, you know. But with the, with the, we uh, <coughs> we have the ability to to fundraise and stuff and do that, and maybe some grants or something like that. But we're we're we're, we're ready to take it over because it needs some work done. On it. Okay. Steve, would you be interested in a lease for a dollar a year? If, if that works, if that's what it takes. I, I, I don't know. See, the park is actually part of the towns anyway. You know, so I don't know. We, we, we talked one time about, you know, we, uh, getting away to being the park being its own entity and stuff like that. But the insurance, if we, got, if we had to buy our own insurance, and getting away from municipal insurance, it was it was just crazy expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's really not. I, I, I mean, we're actually a, an arm of the town itself. So I mean, if that's what it took to do it, but uh, it needs a driving a new driving force behind it somehow or other. And we've got internet up there now at the at the main building. Uh, so I think we can. Fly it down there, or whatever the hell, however it gets there, and uh, and then get uh, get computers in the library in the park. Or yeah, that, in I our remember room. you guys had have over time, you know, for years and years and years, you just kind of created a bit of a hybrid because you're not your own entity, as I recall, right? Right, so, right. And so you you're a subset underneath the village, and so you guys are under our insurance, right? And you fundraise. And I think there were some. I think that the auditor has had some concerns over time that those monies haven't been accounted for in the city in the city coffers. So if we're not going to unwind it completely, we're going to have. I mean, we have to have. That's a complicated conversation. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It's not a simple outside entity coming in and leasing because they don't have an entity. They're a subset of us. So yeah, that's what's keeping us from becoming a uh, uh, what a non-profit. Deal, you know, getting our own status because we have no assets. The only, our only asset we have is what money we have, and it's really, it's yeah, it's everybody's money. Yeah, we probably have to, we probably have to do something a little. It would have to take a different form than than a lease to you because there's nothing to lease to because mm -hmm. you guys aren't. There's no entity there to lease to. Right. Remember, we ran into that a couple, three or four years ago when you guys were trying to. Borrow the money and do some things with uh, yeah, the new building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll have to. I mean, I'll have to put some thought to that. And, 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 and I mean, also this has this is like step one because our next step is probably doing something corp and, and joining up with the museum and doing something there too. You know, so okay. I, it, it probably it's it's a big picture trying to come together, and I don't know how how all that okay. weaves or whatever it does, but. I think that's something we're interested in doing. Okay. And that, the, but the museum's privately owned, correct? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would be a better route if you can partner with the museum, and then there's an entity there that we can lease to, and then you could be a, a doing business as underneath the umbrella of the museum. You might be able to use their insurance. Right. I'm, think, I'm just thinking out loud. Well, that, oh, we, we, the, 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 I mean, the, the difference between private insurance and municipal insurance is crazy. Oh, of course. It, yeah. yeah so, do you guys have your own liability insurance? No, we're through yeah, the You're just under our umbrella. Right, yeah, and it's it's... You know, we look at it on our own, and it's 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 crazy high. Yeah. So anything we can get through the municipal funds and funding like that is a whole lot cheaper. Yep. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So right now you're not paying insurance. You you fall under our. Umbrella. Well, we 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 offered to pay our part, and and that's we jump back and forth, and we have we haven't we have we haven't you know. Okay. Same thing with the electric and stuff like that. Okay. You know, yeah, all that billing right. should be through us. Okay. That's something I have to work on again. Okay. To get that all cut. Because it, it had at one time it had four electric meters there, you, you know, and a couple of them, the meter never moved at all. I mean, it, it was just nothing. Sure. So now there's just one. So that clears that up a little bit. Okay. So whatever that takes. I mean, it doesn't. Okay. It's it's. Uh, okay. You want to research that for us? Yeah. Yeah. You have a suggestion, I can. I can give you a suggestion. 
Yep, for sure. So, I mean, what it, I, mean I, I don't know the, I don't know what our expectations are or, or anything like that. But, uh, okay. Well, I can I can inform the board as to what their options are mm -hmm. at some point. <clears throat> okay, so we'll have uh, Todd research that, and then we'll get back with you. Today. Perfect, perfect. That's fine. Okay. Anybody got anything for the Park Association? Nope. Streets and sidewalks. Uh, we've got the culvert replaced on North Prairie. We're still waiting on a, a T. But they were, he was able to go ahead and do it. He can put you know that T comes in, it's nothing to slap that on there, so that's completed. And then I'm still waiting on bid for uh, Park Street. Colts. Have you got my name? You bid on the covers themselves? Hmm? Have you got bid on the covers themselves? Yeah, I've got the bids on all that. I'm just waiting on the bid to get the work done. That's a standard. Okay. Uh, no, they're, they're bigger. That's some great big ones. Oh, the big ones the the and they're yeah. all galvanized. Can't get plastic on those. Either. The other one's 14 inches. That um, that's what we cut on pressure. One 14, 18, 14 or 15, something like that. Yeah. But those were on park when we break the ones. Yeah, I just want to go here. But they want to get rid of that hole. I think 15 is There's a terrible hole. So you're just waiting on the prices on that part. Okay. Uh, anything else on the streets and sidewalks? Nope. Nope. Uh, water and sewer? So, uh, for those of you that went here last month, um, we do know that there is going to be an increase in the water rates. Dawn has contacted uh, Truzy County Rural Water and they told her she's going to have to speak with Greg to get the necessary information that we need. So hopefully next meeting we can have that and kind of have some figures put together. Um, but we're probably looking at bare minimum about a 49% increase in water. Um, not just us, but that's going on everywhere. Hey, what we ever find out on Mrs. Davis on Sean? Is she in town or out of town? On that so, Dawn <coughs> can answer that because she spoke with them at the courthouse on that. I called the courthouse and uh, they have her as not in corporate limits for the village. The only thing with that is, I don't know if you remember her bringing up that her meter is up on Henry. Right. Um, so technically the meter is in corporate limits, but she said that they did not want to pay, whoever was there when they put it in, didn't want to pay to have that ran out there. So that, to me, says that they weren't in corporate limits at the house. So it wasn't paid to go out there, but it's still technically the property is outside of village limits, according to McCoupin County, who they do not pay in corporate limit taxes. Okay. How come we have to go out there to her driveway, the other side of her driveway, a few feet, and all of that street? I don't know that we do. I, I, this is, I'm just saying, I don't I don't know that we do. No, that is the information if I got if when that, I called that's it. that's not in the corporate limits, we don't want to go that far. I was told back then it was in the corporate limits. I but saw their house. We had to get the county park. engineer out there. I yeah. didn't tell us what we had. Yeah. Yeah. We have to, because we always have a little bit far. Mm -hmm. So if her house was not in city limits, because I went through that when I was on board before, I wanted to go to oil that and go, oh, yes, you are. That's in city limits. They took me out and showed me right where it was at. So, and on that, so. If something does happen, if there's a water line break between their house and that meter, they're responsible for the water line oh. all the way across there. And they are not on sewer, for sure. They, the sewer does not go out there. there, so we wouldn't pay to pump their tank, which was also brought up at the last meeting.
anybody have anything for water and sewer? Uh, Jacob's not made it in yet. Okay. Let's skip down to new business. We'll go to back to maintenance when he gets here. Um, let's jump down to we don't have um, appointment of a board member. I did. I must have messed up. You would just tell people. Okay. So Blake Funk is interested in getting on the board. So do we have a consensus that we're good with that? Did you did he have to fill out a he did? Are you where you live. Uh, fourth Street, next to Warren, fifth Fourth. Okay. You have to bring your car behind it for sure. He lives over there <coughs> where Lottie or uh, Albert used to live, and then uh, Dell and Michelle Swisher. Oh, okay. The old Hubbard house. Yeah. All right. Everybody good with that? Yep. yep. Warren, Warren, Jack? Yep. Yeah. All right. Blake will swear you in at the next meeting, okay? All right. Uh, possible action regarding the appropriations ordinance. So, prior to the meeting, uh, Don had this drafted up. It's in your folder here. This is a uh, appropriations for the fiscal year of May 2024, ending the 30th day of April 2025. So it just goes down through here as to uh, the different accounts, general account. $238,770, water fund $168,319, sewer fund was $63,829, cemetery $28,290, motor fuel $71,016 for a total of $570,224. Um, and as Don alluded to in the uh, the meeting prior to this that this is not a true reflection because there was some uh, discrepancies from the last audit on monies that we didn't have into uh, the accounts and stuff so bear in mind that that could be a, uh, a factor in some of those yeah and if I might um, go ahead mayor so the appropriations ordinance is not a budget. It's one thing to, to, to understand that it is not. In order to appropriate funds throughout the year, you have to, in order to spend funds throughout the year, you have to have previously appropriated them. So what you all are doing here is taking last year's appropriation budget, the amount of money that you spent, making estimates for next year's expenditures, and then that allows you to, to spend money throughout the year because you have appropriated it at this meeting. The actual budget itself, the levy, comes out in December. Okay, So this is an authorization to spend, not a this is what we're going to spend. And that's a that's, a, that's an important distinction to make about the authorization. The statute requires that you authorize you authorize the, the expenditure of funds and then every month you will then be approving expenditures based on your based on your bills. Anybody have any questions? <clears throat> Do we have a motion to accept the appropriations ordinance? I 
I make a motion. Got a motion by Mills to accept the appropriations ordinance for May 2024 through the 30th day of April 2025. We have a second. I'll second it. Second by Eichen. Let's roll call that, please. Donahue. Yes. Trevino, President Aiken. Yes. Cunningham. Yes. Mills. Yes. Okay. So if you'll get a number on that, Don, mm -hmm. and get that file, please. Okay. 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 Discussion and possible action regarding speed bumps. I have a gentleman's willing to make a good donation to the village if you remove the speed bump, which will more than cover the cost of removing them and putting up a stop sign at Reed Lane, the three-way stop. He's agreed to that. He's wanting the speed bumps out staring up his equipment. He's That's just for the one speed bump, correct? No, all of them. All of them in town? No, well, yeah, I guess. Just now here, it doesn't matter. I think we only got four in town, though. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. He's just staring up his equipment. Three on He's willing to make a good donation. Well, so what's the price of somebody's life? Because there's kids that live out there on that street. Put a speed bump out there. Stop, stop sign out there. Stop sign ain't going to do anything either. Well, speed bump sure as hell don't do nothing in front of my house. So, I mean. The slow ones, they slow down. Stop. So does this guy live in town? No. Okay. They, when they come by my house, you can hear them leave down at the other speed bump and they fly over that one. And the guys that hate themselves for it, they come up and stop them. Go on. Mm -hmm. So that's what it boils down to is, you know, uh, a whole safety aspect yeah. is the way I look at it. But you guys, what's your guys' feeling? I have a good where they put I the, stop, where? Uh, uh, the, the stop sign. Well, that's my that lane that reads lane. It's well, my we, lane. Well, we were thinking. So where are they putting it? Are they putting it on the street? Or are they putting it at the end of my lane? No, no. It, it would be. It would be a yeah, three-way stop. Three-way three stop. stop at the end of your lane, going north or south. Just so, just one at the end of my drive. Correct. Okay. There'd be a three-way stop there, north and south, and you come. All out. of them stop. Yep. <laughs> yep. Do what speed bump. Oh, <laughs> You stop there anyway. You kind of stop there anyway. You stop and look to see if something's coming. Very good donation. I should get them ones that haven't tested. It's about the, the speedy ones. If I set my driveway for an hour, I don't really have to speed bumps. Which way you guys go? Jack asked me about it before the meeting, and I said, it, there's nothing wrong with you accepting the donation, making the acceptance of the donation contingent upon the work, and then whenever you, if you guys were to authorize the speed bumps being taken out, then you would apply that money to the monies that you had spent. Obviously, we would make sure we get the, any approval from the, the state element, from IDOT. And that's just a simple call and letter from them saying it's okay. Okay, but the other speed bumps are up there in town. <coughs> yep. right here. You got one here, you got one down there, uh, right there in front of you. all three of them on Prairie. Yeah, you got three there on Prairie, so you going to put a stop sign at each one of them? No, just have one stop sign. That's just so, that's so, so, you're going to eliminate all down, They get up there, they got to slow down, stop, and then start over. Okay, and but what, what are you going to do the one up there, right there uh, by the uh, old Holloway house, right there in front of them? Well, if you want to, we'd leave it, or we'd take no, it out. No, no, no. That's the board decision. Because I, <laughs> the, 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 all the guys have got the spray rigs. Oh, they hate them. That one right there, because it's too sharp. It's never been maintained properly. The state engineer told me where you have your speed bump laid out there, from center, out seven foot the ramp. Center, seven foot the ramp. There's not one of them. Mm -hmm. Really, there's, there's, not, there's not one anywhere. No. Mm -hmm. Looks like that. I don't care what city you go in. There's not a regulation period. Okay, that's right. So that is right. There's not no regulations. regulations. All right, but that's, he, what, that's what he, he recommended being the state engineer. Uh, I understand that. They recommend a lot of things. Right. I, I don't agree with taking the speed bumps out myself personally. What? Because of the simple fact that, you know, that they was put in there for a reason. Now you're just going to, you're going to put a stop sign out there at one, and people are going to get tired of that, and they're just going to blow through the stop sign because... Why? 
We don't have a cop. We've anymore. never we never had him there for 25 years that, that I've lived there. Nobody okay, ever, stop at this one. Oh, there's a stop sign right there with it. And I still see him fly on the jet. They fly on the road regardless. Well, stop sign slow down. Maybe it's not that much slow down. I don't know. I have just a comment. I look. Right, you can do that when okay. it's time for you to speak okay. again. My opinion is no. to take them out because the one over by where she lives, they're going through the people's yard. They go through Mary Beth's And yard. they go through the other property also. They go up the side. And if they're going to run a stop sign, they're going to run a stop sign. They run the stop sign right here all the time at the point. Yeah. And then through Polly's parking So. They run the stop sign. There's no speed bump or anything else to slow down, so they just they just hammer down. They run all over this county anyway. Okay. So I think that let's table this. Let's call IDOT and get their input from them guys. And then once we know what all the ramifications are. And we can say, okay, this is what they and then you can vote. they have, and then we can say, okay, then you guys can say, yes, this is what I want to do, or no, this is not what I want to do. But before we sit here and say, okay, this is what we want to do, and something changes to where we can't, let's get all the information from them, bring it back, say, okay, this is what they told us it has to be done in order to do this, and we'll, we'll address it. I don't recall, do we have to call them to put those in? Do we have to call? No, we didn't call to put him in. No, we just had to have the regulations of what needed to be done. <coughs> that was me and Kyle. Okay. Really, there's no regulations that man told me. Well, I, I just didn't know. Engineer. Engineer. I didn't know. But he, if he, we didn't have to call him to put him in, why would we have to call him to take him out? That's correct. That was just my question. I'll call him tomorrow. Yeah. We'll get the we just need a letter. We need a letter from my dad saying it's okay. Mr. Wright, he's, okay. he's a state engineer over this area. Yeah. Anytime, I, anytime I have a client that messes with their roads, and you have to buy the appropriate signage because the signage has to meet IDOT specifications and then it has to be at a certain height and everything else. There's a book that does all of that, that sets all that stuff. Okay, and, yeah, so and if the board would approve it, if, if IDOT says it, then the board would approve it. Nothing would be done until we made sure we got the money from the individual anyway. So. Well, do we do it first or what? We'll, we'll, we'll get the information from them and then next month, if they say there's nothing there, then we'll proceed with it then. Okay, so if you will automatically earmark that for old business next month, please. And you're going to call him tomorrow and get a letter from him. Yeah, get a letter from him tomorrow. All right, all right. Well, I think Don's been in his office. So, okay. Mr. Wright, you've been up for having you. All right. Uh, discussion and action regarding the culvert ordinance. Don, did you ever find anything on that we had before? Um, I was going to ask you, um, do you have, do you know where it, I don't know where it's at. Where it's at in the ordinance book? No, I, 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 I looked at it. Even I going know. through the files. I think it was just a policy we followed. I don't think it was ever made into an ordinance. Okay. What are we doing with the culvert ordinance? Well, I guess we could make make an ordinance out of it. You'd have to tell. You'd have to yeah. revamp and make an ordinance because yeah. we don't have one that we don't have one to rewrite. Down the line, because there was one last one. Do you know what section it was in? No, or anything? I don't know. Yes, it was really an ordinance. It was a policy, basically. When somebody come into town, they want a driveway. They had to buy the tube, whatever length they wanted, put in the state when they when they wore out. Rusted out, the town would stand for 20 foot. 
And if you wanted a 30 foot, you bought 30 foot, <coughs> an extra 10 foot, a band, and an extra rod. So they replaced mine, it rotted out, and I put an extra six foot on, I bought a band, I think a thousand pound of rock, plus the six foot too. So we don't have nothing unless you can do that. That'll be something we'll have to look into to draft something up on that. Okay. I can draw up something on it and get the proof. Let us discuss it and have the lawyer make an official. Draft well, the something question, up? Yeah, the question is whether or not the board's going to approve it. Yeah. And it doesn't do any good to, to draft an ordinance. Okay. Right. Yeah. We may as well discuss it. Uh -uh. Some proof. You know. Before you want to finish this. Before your expenditure of that money. Yeah. Or we can draw it up. Of Draw something up and present it next meeting and see what everybody says. I'm sorry. Put Jack down. He's going to <coughs> draft a policy on culverts and present it next meeting. Okay. In order for it to be covered, that's just stay through to the start with. Okay. If it's for a driveway, the state wouldn't. We wouldn't be paying for that. The town does not pay for the first one. That's what I'm paying. The one. Okay. Depending on when it rests out, then the town's got the coverage for 20 foot. What it was before. If you had 30 foot, you have to buy it. The, table, the town would pay for 20. And you bought the 10 plus the van. That's your rock. Yeah, because we don't have nothing to, to go by now, but yeah. draw something up and we'll. It was here when I was on the board. Or when I don't know. We've lost it from here now. Well, <coughs> find an ordinance book that's got everything in it. That's. Uh, you don't right there, but yeah. I haven't found it. <laughs> All right. Uh, discussion of possible action regarding employment. Uh, we need to go into executive session for that. Um, we can hold off on that. Let's go down. Uh, discussion of possible action regarding the employee handbook. So there was some things that had came up in uh, adding to the handbook as far as like our pay. So when somebody starts, we hold two weeks and then, you know, they're paid after the next two weeks. That's the way it was. I don't think that's where I screw it up, is it? Uh, I that's you, you were you work like you work your first one week and then the next week pay week. You had, they had to well your pay period starts Sunday morning at zero hours and again Saturday night at twenty four hundred hours. And they had five working days to get you a paycheck. But we had a situation where we was paying out payroll on one day this week, this day the next week, this week. So we went back and said, okay, we're going to pay everybody on the same day. At the same time, instead of having to come up here every week yeah. and cut well, payroll, so you got caught at the wrong time. Yep. I've been caught that way. Hard in. So yeah, what we, we did is we said, okay, we're going to hold the two weeks, and then you, the next pay period, you'll get paid for that first initial two weeks. You're going to be two weeks behind. Right. Now, yeah, when you leave or whatever, then the next payday, you still got a full check right. coming to you. And you know, right. so that would, if you go somewhere else, kind of help get you through or right. whatever else. Right. And so and we so had changed it hits. back, or we had changed it to that uh, format just for that reason. So that we're not paying payroll every week. We're doing it to the same time. Each the same period. two week period. Yes. So we need to get that added into. The employee handbook. Just amend the employee handbook Just to reflect Amend that. it to reflect that. Okay. <laughs> what else was there on the employee handbook that uh, was um, taking like, Oh, okay. And the other thing was the uh, taking the village equipment out of town. So here's the situation if we have a water line that breaks. And we don't have the supplies. Are we going to have somebody bring us the supplies and sit here 
or are we going to say, okay, we're going to call around and say, okay, we need to go get this, we need to go get this, we need to go get this. I think you'll look in here. It says for. Well, how does that work? I can't remember. I would think emergency. Emergency. Well, well for, for let's me. not think. It's going to be black and white. Emergency we need to go get and, stuff. Yeah, I think supplies. Are, we need to go get supplies. Yeah. You can do I'm that not. for supplies, business purposes. Not go to the bank. Just business purposes. If you're going to Jerseyville to get something and you swing by the bank. You can do that if you use your lunch hour. What, 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 what's what's that? Lunch hour is fine. But what about 5 o'clock in the evening, sitting there at the tavern? I'm not saying that, you know. You know that, 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 that truck at 430, he brings it out and goes home. And parks the truck. So we, don't do need, we, we don't really care to have that. Do we want to get tavern. into the policy of that? Because it says in there, if, you know, it's not a, not during working hours that you can use the equipment, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in the board's past, the maintenance person has taken the truck home and used the, the vehicle. That got stopped too. That's why this is broke. Yeah, it did. So that's why this got rolled up. So the suggestion is is that during work hours, the maintenance our vehicles can be used for work purposes. Yes, sir. And and leave village property. That's the suggestion. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because there's no that's since you're calling me and say, hey, I need to go get this, and I call you, 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 and you, and say, hey, we need to go get supplies. Go get the supplies. You know, if we have an emergency, go get the stuff. And if you're there at lunch hour and you go through and get something to eat, is it hurting anything? You've taken your lunch hour while you're over there and coming back here if you're going to work on something. As long as they were on a yeah, official I, business to begin with. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah if they're on a special business. But just to make it quick there, no. No. So that is the that. that is the other thing to add into that. Okay. okay. All right. So we have a motion to go into executive session regarding employment. I make a motion to go into executive. Got a motion to go into executive session regarding employment at seven forty-eight. Got a second. Second by Cottingham, which we'll call that, please. Donnie, yeah. Trevino's absent. Uh, I can. Yes, Cottingham. No, fine. You're getting off a bus. Oh, I love it. Maybe a little chorus in the same part. I see. I see. Somebody just stole your vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. We can still get her. <laughs> 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 I turned it down for you. Thank you. All right. We need a motion to uh, come out of executive session, go back into the normal, regular business meeting. I make a motion. At 807. I'm sorry. Let's read that. Need a motion to come out of executive session and go back into the regular scheduled board meeting at 8.07. I make a motion. We've got a motion by Eichen. We have a second. Awesome. Second by Mills, which we'll call that. Donahue. Yes. Yes. Eichen. Yes. Cottingham. Yes. Mills. Yes. Trevino's up. All right. So, under employment. Need a motion for what was the name? for Dan Butler to hire Dan Butler to be the maintenance man with the same stipulations that we had with Sam, which will run through October 31st of this year. We got a motion by Donahue. We got a second. I'll second. Second by Eichen. 
Diane. Yes. Hi again. Yes. Hi again. Yes. No. Yes. All right. Jacob. <clears throat> He's not here. Is he out there? Yes, please. All right, Jacob, you're up on the maintenance report. Oh, well, here, here. Well, these are four separate pump outs. So 98 tanks to be done. Can you hear? Can you hear? So 98 needs to be pumped. Yep. And then just to put the call back up. And uh, $180 per tank. Yep. 17,640. That's through. Uh, Community septic. Community septic uh, Spickerman's out of Bunker Hill. Yes, sir. And the uh, expert tank, that's the spare valve for the water tower. Uh, the actuator here for $1,096. Yep. Six to seven week uh, wait on that. Then, yeah, we we got the new one in already, but the in the region it's cheaper than what the other one was because there's something on the one that we got that we really don't even have to have. So, and because it's not a rush, then is this a rebuild? Or new? That's brand new. What was it rebuilt? Fourteen hundred eight dollars. This is brand new. It's thousand ninety six. Yep. No rain around. Hmm. This is the rebuild. <laughs> we definitely need to move it. Right. So, what do we want to do with that? I know we discussed that last time. We was waiting on a quote to come back to see what it was going to cost to be rebuilt or for a brand new one. motion by Cottingham to buy a new actuator to have on hand for a thousand ninety six dollars. Do we have a second? Second that. Got a second by Mills. Let's roll call that please. Donahue? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Cottingham? Yes. Mills? Yes. Jacob, if you'll get that order. And then uh, MCO, and that's a hydrant for Gunner Road Wing. Okay. And then one through Schulte's, about $60 more, but the exact same thing. So, whatever you guys want to do there, however we go about it. I know last week we said we need to change it because it's been leaking for a year. Right. So this is everything that we need to change that out. Yep. We've got all the fittings and everything that will hook right up to the water line. Yep. Can we come up with the money to buy that? That's all I'm saying.
Because our water bills have already been paid. Yeah, sure there's on the bill list. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you can take it either out of water or you can take it out of sewer. <coughs> we got fourteen thousand coming out of sewer. Seventeen thousand sitting them out. Maybe about fifteen thousand. And some change, fourteen thousand and some change. Motor fuel's off limits. We can pump off. We can pump off. We can pump off. I think that's free to side. Yeah, I think so. I'd say either do it out of water or sewer. And you got, what was it, 17 and some change coming out of sewer for the 17.6 for the pump, separate pumpings. motion? Yes. So I got a motion by Cottingham to purchase the fire hydrant for down at Rose Lane. We'll take the funds out of the uh, sewer and then we can just repay that back for a total of $3,254.50. We have to make a loan, don't we, out of that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We only got a certain back. amount of time to pay it off as well. Mm -hmm. How many other? How many other ones have we got more mm -hmm. in front of accounts? Been been we've been born, unfortunately. I'll second that. So we've got a motion and a second to buy the fire hydrant for down at Rose Lane for $3,254.50 out of sewer. Let's roll call that, please. Nels? Yeah. Donnie? Yes. I do? Yes. Cottingham? Yes. Charlie Yes. Okay, let's go back to the uh, septic tank pumpings because I didn't realize we didn't have a motion on that. We'll need a motion to uh, accept the 98 tanks at $180 per pumping for a total of $17,640 for community septic. Isn't that a lot more than it was? Oh no, I just paid 300 Yeah, that's off and that, that'll be the one to get pumped out to stay at the school. I'm going to have it. It's already got pumped out, but there's like a seven or eight to get pumped out. Every put me on that pump. And that should put us on that track to yeah, where we need to be. Every, every acre, we can put it up. Okay. Okay. Back in the three-year-old. That's what we got for a month for it. Yeah. Okay, and that's paying 500. Throughout. Every three months. 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 Every taken out of the septic tanks pumped out of the sewer. Got a motion by Donahue to accept <coughs> the bid from community septic for seventeen thousand six forty. Take that out of the sewer. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Second by Mills. I'll let's roll call that please. Mills? Yes. Donahue? Yes. Icon? Yes. Donahue? Yes. So I know you're kind of on his schedule and time frame so just yeah. whatever he's but if you will, he was one that said he called me last like Thursday, I think it was, one year Thursday. So, and asked if what we were going to do about it because he wanted to get the school done before they started and stuff like that. So he's okay. ready to start. We'll probably start tomorrow, actually. And if you would make sure that everything's uncovered so that there's no uh, incurred costs yep. for them to have to open the lids or anything. Okay. Last 
the smallest and lightest four gas monitor here. Yep. That plug, and then on the thing, flip that, that one over the calibration station and uh, oh, the, the pump with the sampling pump. Yeah. Uh huh. Is also included on that. The bit here? Yeah. Okay. So you want to explain a little bit about this then? Mm -hmm. Please. So, like, basically, getting in any confined space, confined space, any hole, deeper than four foot. I personally, I'm not going to do it without having something like that because, you know, one, if the option ain't right, you ain't going to make it out. But two, you know, sewer, especially, lift stations, getting the pumps out of the lift stations. Methane gas down there. You don't need to be in a hole for it, do you? Well, I'm not, I, mean, I won't be. You don't need to be in one. Safety. Unless you got somebody there with you. But even the past, so even, even if you got somebody there, they need to have a monitor there to where they can tell what the what their O2 readings and everything else are. You know, you got H2S down in there from sewer and everything else. So. And so it's probably a regulation through OSHA. It is. Oh, I'm sure. It okay. most certainly is. You go against that one, you go to jail. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll get fined because we didn't uh, supply with the right equipment. I know where to do it. I had a good friend of mine got one sniff. So I straight to the nursing home and never got on this on this bid. This has got um, the pump with 10 foot hose, 10 foot probe for GX3R4 gas detector calibration station for a total of 27.75. Which he said, Don said <clears throat> that if we didn't want to get the calibration station, then it's basically going to be uh, calibrated once every six months. If they charge one dollars to calibrate it. But if we have it and we have an issue with it here, we can calibrate our own and yep. we're not waiting on them. Yeah. All right, so for a four gas monitor, you're looking at 2775 for the monitor, the hose, the probe, the calibration, and everything that goes along with it. Where's that from? This is from Schulte Supply in Edwardsville. That's why we never had one of those before. I mean, why do we need it all of a sudden? I mean, I, mean, I, I don't know safety, like, but... Well, like, for instance, main holes ain't been cleaned up since they've been put in in 82. Or 83, wherever you get put in. And so... Well, Dwight said you're not going to get in the manhole. He's not going to bunker hill do that. Well, yeah, well, I mean, that's... That that would be more of a thing to pump out the tank. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't care either way. It don't make me on my mind, but... But like the main hole by on uh, Seaman Street, you know you seen it? It's got a bunch of ropes and stuff like that coming through the so side. So they did out my yard in that hole they're there? On, they're on down inside. So they've got to be cut out. Some of them are low. You can't reach them with just a pair of tweezers or tongs or whatever. Well, when Jake was out there mine, not, nobody's ever been out there that done mine before that I know of. Well, and that's a problem that we're finding out through the EPA is that that hasn't been done. So now, we're the ones who are yeah. going to... Yeah, I'm just curious. That, yeah. That's why. Which the... the perfect, basically, if, we, if just the monitor and then the calibration station, the other one's not a... Like, it just basically is more beneficial. <coughs> it's not... So you can just put a string on the monitor itself and lower it down in there without having to have the probe and everything. Well, if we're going to do it, let's do it right, because I'm not going to be the one that's going to sit here and take responsibility. And, and that way, if it's required by OSHA, which I know it is, that if we're going to get into something, there better be somebody up on top. Who would be the ones that would be cleaning those out? Well, if we open, you say open them up, you know, and whatever's trapped in there. Let me, uh... Do you have a supplier to possibly get a bid from? Let me check with my guy down there at work. Okay. They might, they might have a different supplier that we can uh, check into. Okay. So, I'll All right. Ask, I'll ask the guy down there first. 
So we'll table this till next month. So between now and then, do not. Oh, um, I agree with that. Um, you have anything else, Jacob? Other than the, glad to see the state uh, recycling paper here. The proposal for uh, Route 16, because we're all paper free. Anybody want to look at this? Uh, so you just said they're wide, right? Five foot on the yeah. ground. What, what they're shown. So far, I remember we have to move. Oops. But I know West Town, there's going to be water lines that we are going to have to move. West of town? Like the four ring road, West of town. But like I thought we put them in, then was put well, off. From Dave Christopher's, two ring road is okay, but from mm, Christopher got there, the West, the West Drive. To Eddie Albert is probably going to have to move. See, I thought when they put them in, they put them, they borrowed money to do that. They put them off far enough in case they. That's what we were told to do, and that's what we did. Yeah, ever came right. through to widen up or to widen the road that <laughs> it would not uh, be affected. Well, if you have private easement, they have to pay. If you don't have private easement, if you're on I got a lot of it. it doesn't matter how far you are, you're on I got a lot of it. You guys got to pay the fee. So it doesn't work out And I would encourage you, if you're able to, if you find yourself not having a private easement and you have to move your line, you might want to try to get a private easement from the person that you're moving to and then you don't have to worry about that. Okay. So uh, when are they projected to start working this way, Jake? When they fall? Yeah. Uh, basically when they finish the one in that they're on now, then they're going to come and start road lane and work back towards that way. So next year? Well, I mean, uh -huh. we're going to start on uh -huh. this fall, but it'll be, they said it'll be done by next year. It'll be done by next year? You think so? I don't think so. They're going to be going all the way from 159 through to where Jersey County line is. So we have, there's two separate um, contracts. There's a contract from Rose Lane to Jersey County line and from Rose Lane to 159. That's why there's two packets there. And he, they, she called me, had me come over and get those. Um, she has to have, Jacob has to go through them and highlight to make sure that they've identified Don't all of the places that, that we it's have water and sewer lines oh, and then okay. scan them and send them to them. So that's it. there will be a, a meeting here at some point prior to the Pretty beginning. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Prior to the beginning of that. Anybody have any questions? Anybody need something to look at for the month? <laughs> did, okay. you, uh, did you ever look at them uh, extensions for the, uh, yeah. the sewer grades? Down for, down for, down for, down for okay. That's to have the ring to put up so that when we oil the chip, they are going to pay. You may want to You may want to be an engineer. It's going to cost you guys to move those lines. Yeah, me and Dwight already talked about that. So let's no. Let's uh, have him come to the next meeting and let's discuss. Well, he he would have been here tonight, but he had some personal things. Okay. <coughs> All right. No problem. Last thing on the thing is uh, committee appointments. So. Don't give you the size of the meetings here. All right, new committees are going to be Water and Sewer, Tim Trevino, Chairman, Jack Mills, Co-Chair. Streets and Sidewalks, Lauren Cottingham will be the Chairman. Cemetery, Brian Donahue, you'll be the Chairman. Bev, you'll be the Vice Chair, or the Co-Chairman. And then Finance is the entire board, and Health and Safety is the entire board. And if you'll make a posting and put that on 
Okay. And one I'll get with you. I'll help Thank you with all the, the stuff on the Park Street over there and everything that way. Okay. All right. Anybody have any questions, comments, concerns? All right. Public comment. Blake, do you have anything? Kim? No. Mary? Yeah. Yes. You're welcome to sit in my driveway and catch those people that are speeding and over the bump. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Okay. Hmm. They do go over five pretty fast. Some of them could care less about that speed bump. <clears throat> You're right. Absolutely. And some of them will stop and go over the speed bump. Yep. I understand. But thank you for the invite and the offer. Teresa. <laughs> Mine was about the speed pump as well. They, as Beverly said, they drive into Mary Beth's yard consistently, <coughs> people do, to avoid hitting that, and they drive up the sidewalk. I mean, when they go into Paul's parking lot, I mean, it's a parking lot, but that's the sidewalk and, and her yard. And her yard. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for child safety, if Mary Beth had a child out there, it'd probably be laying there, but she only has dogs, so. Yeah, a dog can be a child. Yes, the they are pretty member. much her babies, those two. <laughs> okay. Eddie? I just called for the entertainment. <laughs> Were you entertained, Eddie? I don't know your name. Lydia. Lydia? <laughs> Nothing? Pam? Yeah, I want to talk about the four-way there, right in the dead center of town. That thing is horrible. I have to drive through it every day and need to take the asphalt from the speed bumps and put it in the, all the holes all the way to First Street. It's a piece of crap. It's uh, all the way to the highway. It's terrible. I don't know what's going to be done about it, but you guys just throw an asphalt in it and it, uh, it's not helping. The four-way uptown from the four-way right center of town. Right here in the right center town. Yeah. Or low line and all that. All the way to 16 it sucks. Uh, that's been, I think, three years since your road has been oiled. Well, I'll tell you what, that intersection right there, it's, it's treacherous. Okay. Anything else? Uh, the last three, I'd say last three or four months, my water bill's been extremely low. <laughs> I'm not complaining too much, but uh, uh, we was looking, we paid my bill last month and it said I used 100, 100 gallons for a family of four. <laughs> I mean, for uh, a couple of years ago, I kind of had the same thing, and uh, they was paying. I was paying extra that I don't want to be caught in a trick bag again. <clears throat> so I'd like to get it corrected. Can you meet with Dawn after this and let her look it up and? Oh, yeah. that. Maybe that'll be corrected today. Okay. <laughs> and I'll for you. <laughs> if you've got time, if not, do you want to set up an appointment? Mm -hmm. Let it here. Drum mm -hmm. here. You done? Never heard that before. No. You, sir? No. Good. I don't know who's sitting behind you. Marty. Marty? Marty. Marty. Diane? No. Ma'am? No. Um, Lori? Yes, I have a prepared statement, if I may. Okay. All right. Good evening. Thank you all for allowing me to speak to you. I want to express my gratitude to Mayor Robinson and to the council members who are present. Having held a leadership position in the public sector, I understand that your work's challenging. Oh, and by the way, also, um, Todd. I understand your work is challenging and that you won't always be able to please everyone. 
Therefore, I would like to start by thanking all of you for all that you do, but I want to focus on the good stuff. So there's a lot of positive activity happening in this town. We have a dedicated group of volunteers who consistently organize events and activities for people within and outside the community. They work diligently to make the town a better place to live and raise families. Why? They're proud of Shipman. As a Shipman Park, Area Park Association member, I've witnessed significant changes in our small town. We now have a Dollar General, which, which makes last minute shopping much more convenient. I think you'll all agree. This is a huge blessing for our community. Furthermore, we have several new businesses that have moved in, showing their investment in our town. These include Bogo Line Print Shop, Precision Excavating, the Windmill Business New, and even 16 Bar and Grill. Why? Because they see potential of shipment. Our fire department recently installed a digital sign to inform the community and passersby about events in our small town. Additionally, the fire department has undergone a makeover. As a trustee of the Bunker Hill Fire Protection District, I see a dedicated group of firefighters coming together to serve our community. Trustees believed investing in the fire department was crucial, comprised of selfless volunteers who invested in their community. Therefore, the new building, equipment, training must meet the same high standards our firefighters and the women of the Shipman Firefighters Association hold themselves. Why? Because they love their community. So I stand before you today recognizing you as volunteers, business leaders, business owners, individuals, givers from our small town and the surrounding region. They have generously shared money, time, and resources that have significantly funded a new park pavilion, a brand new park pavilion, a $100,000 park pavilion. We are extremely grateful for all who have contributed in various ways to enhance our community park. In addition to the pavilion, we've added a new floor to the pavilion kitchen, a new sound system for the park, new tables and chairs, a new sidewalk lined with the legacy brick path, stage sign dedicated to the kitchen clatter band, and an outdoor camera system, and even the shipment shock eggs. <laughs> So much good stuff has happened in our little town and will continue to happen with the help of everyone. Why? Because Shipman is the place we call home. So I've learned much about leading a school district. When the community leaders come together and start sharing the good stuff, the good stuff starts spreading. Once the good stuff starts spreading, people pay attention. People want to be included. They want to invest in a community like this. The next thing you know, someone else feels compelled to bring his or her business here. And the next thing you know, someone's bringing a gas station. Woo! Come on. That'd be great. Yes. The trickle effect occurs with another and another following. A thriving town could be right around the corner. Why? Because the community loves shipment. So several recently informed me that going to the city council member meeting, and I did not see this today, would not happen again. Several. They said too negative. One said toxic. Another said bitch fest. This profoundly impacts me. And I ponder the significance of such behavior. Considering our community's abundance of positive developments, it struck me deeply. It perplexes me when people focus on the negative rather than embrace the positive surrounding them. As a mother and a leader, I have always stressed to my daughters and those with whom I've had the privilege of working that our thoughts possess incredible power to shape our reality. My unwavering belief is that concentrating on any situation's positive effect aspects inevitably leads to positive outcomes. And I hope with all my heart, ladies and gentlemen, that we come together and shine a bright light on the good stuff occurring in this community, our community. Let me emphasize the importance of working together, so beautifully described by Coretta Scott King. The greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. Thus, let this council 
which acts as a representative body for the residents in its constituency, and our mayor joined forces to implement a comprehensive and targeted strategies to revitalize Shipman, restoring its prosperity and promoting a positive public image. Let us shine the spotlight on Shipman in every good way. Remember, what you think about, you bring about. So let's think about and bring about the good stuff. Why? Because we love our, our shipment and we want it to be a thriving town for our families and their families and the many generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you. Angie. Oh. Nope. There, uh, no. 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 Nope. Steve? Yeah, I have a few things. You got 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds before he got your <laughs> okay. uh, I wanted I want to thank uh, Precision Excavating, the village employees, and especially Jack Mills. Jack called several days before that project was going on. I, I know he called me, and I'm sure he called everybody, and... Uh, um, that was above and beyond. So thank you, Jack. Everybody knew. If you didn't know the road was closed, it was probably you were going to be closed. It was your own fault. And I, I, they were done before I got home from work. So I don't know how fast it took. Uh, uh, you work. So thank you. Uh, on the culverts, you might check with JD uh, with the town, ship and township. They, I know they have a, a culvert, some sort of deal. You know, you buy the first one. The homeowner, the property owner buys the first one, and then after that, they might have something like that in writing, just a reference on it. Okay, then on that uh, O2 sensor, uh, I, I'm, I'm speaking for SAPA. Let's do a fundraiser. Uh, we, we, have, we have fish left over from the picnic or something, and we have the wherewithal to do that. We can, you know, a couple thousand dollars, I think we can get that pretty quick. You know, we have a, have a dinner. You know, have a dinner and a donation. We know we do about as well on donations as we do as charging. So we're living a very generous. We're we're, we're doing very well on that. As far as the the uh, the water prices and stuff like that, I just like through that my cell phone. You know, I mean, every my monthly utility bills. My cell phone's the highest. My electric's the next. Then my gas bill. And then my cable TV, and then my water, and then my trash. So if the water goes up 50%, which is fine, it's still less than cell phone, electric, and gas. I need water. I don't need a cell phone. I don't need cable TV. So whatever, the, and I understand this stuff. When it, that's how much it costs. I mean, you can't give water away. That we gotta have it, you know. So I, I, I don't care what water costs. I remember growing up with a well, and every Saturday night we ran out of water. So uh, that's all I got. So Steve, just can we get some clarification so you go to bed when it gets dark and get up? Do I? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's just, oh, you. you know, I mean, so it falls in line, you know. You know, you got to have electricity, you got to have gas, but you, you got to have water. I mean, cable TV, and I, I, I cramp on cable TV, you know, and anybody worrying about paying, you know, $75. And I also, I put in my own septic system because I, I have city water, but I don't have. So in two, the year 2000, my septic system cost $9,500 for me to put that in. And I've had it pumped numerous times. So that's, I've had, I've got. Eleven thousand dollars in that. So if I break that down per month, that's thirty-seven dollars a month. My septic system is costing me. So yeah. that's what it costs. You know, if they if they think the cities is too high, put in your own. And see what it costs. Get it approved then see if it. Yeah, see what it costs. You're right. Okay. Thank you. You're up. I just saw a cell phone bill. It's not right. So he is a flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> if you go to these babies, right? Yeah. There's no way that costs that much. So I just want to say, close with one thing that you said, Lori, the negativity. The negativity does not affect me, any one of these guys sitting here. You know what? You're in a little bit of a political 
atmosphere that comes with the job, but it's the community here when everybody says, you know what, I would move to Shipman because all you got to do is get on there and this, that, and the other. So, yes, look at these guys here. You know what, everybody here can sit here and work together. I mean, so, yes, but thank you for the recognition. I'm sure these guys appreciate it because they hear the same thing. We appreciate that. Before we go, um, we, we will be getting petition packets mailed to the clerks um, before the 20th of August. Um, 20th of August is when circulation begins. The circulation period begins. So if you're interested in getting a packet to have one of these lovely seats up here, um, all you need to do is get a hold of me, and of course my number is on the front board and or the front window and on your water bill. The, it's the 818-7461 number. Um, you, you're going to get a better um, chance of contacting me on that than calling up here because I'm not up here. I'm, I'm with the cell phone. Anybody got anything else for anybody? Anybody want to go home? Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. We got a motion by Brian. We got a second to adjourn by Bev. All those in favor, aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you for coming, everybody.